is Jason W. Chan, and this is Jason W. Chan's Take. Today's story comes to us from my hometown in Vancouver. Robot servers shouldn't get a tip. Vancouverite says tipping culture is getting out of hand. I absolutely agree. And I don't believe in tipping in general. I mean, if they, the staff want more money, they should just ask the restaurant for a raise or tax or they could tax on a service charge, which is what restaurants do in Southeast Asia and Thailand. And that's why I prefer to be in Asia, to live in Asia, because that is where there is no tipping. You, they have a set service charge at the end, some of the restaurants anyway, and you don't have to work out how much to tip. Anyway, let's see what's happening in Vancouver. British Columbians can add a tip to just about any service now, and one Vancouverite says tipping expectations are getting out of hand. Christina McNally says she recently felt pressured to leave a tip in a restaurant, although her server was a robot. You serve yourself because you're taking it from the robot and putting it on your table, McNally explained. McNally adds that human service was minimal, so she didn't feel like she needed to leave a tip. But after paying, she received a surprise reaction from a staff member. We didn't see the server until we flagged down one for our receipt. And then we went to pay, and she said, you don't tip? And I said, how do you tip a robot? McNally isn't the only one who feels tipping has gone too far. One person told City News they can feel pressured to leave a tip when ordering something small like a drink. The prompt comes up, and you feel kind of guilty about it. But then you're like, eh, all you did was pour me a coffee, they said. Another local ethos the statement, or the sentiment, rather. Oh, actually, I mispronounced it. Another local echoes the sentiment. I thought they meant, like, work ethic or something, work ethos. Adding, saying a tip for service can feel like it's being forced upon us. It is, right? Look at this here. Add a tip, right? 15%, 20%, 18%, custom tip. And no tip. And when you press this button, you know you'll feel a little embarrassed or guilty, right? Just ridiculous. Some of them start at 15, 20, 25 percent. And that's just ludicrous as far as I'm concerned, another person added. Simon Peck, an associate professor of business at the University of Victoria, says two tipping trends have been gaining traction over the last few years. The first is that we're being prompted to tip in a much larger array of contexts. Peck said. He says prompts for tips have popped up in a myriad of places, including some fast food restaurants. That's ridiculous. You're not getting any service in a fast food restaurant. Retail establishments, really? You ought to tip the cashier now? You ought to tip the person that you pay to buy socks from? And also liquor stores. More ridiculousness. Adding on top of tips being asked for in more places, the amount expected has also increased the prompts for the size of the tip are getting higher and higher he explained but prompting for tips doesn't happen everywhere with one vancouver business going as far so far as not to accept tips at all the owner of folk restaurant a vegan eatery that opened over the summer says they chose to take a non-traditional route priscilla dio says folks employees don't need tips because they pay everyone a fair salary with benefits. Yes, I agree with this. This is exactly how it should be. This way, the onus on the customer as to how much to tip will be removed. When we came up with the idea for a folk, we wanted it to be a really cool, rather really collaborative team environment. And we decided to just eliminate tipping culture altogether, she said. Dio says staff shouldn't have to rely on tips to make enough money. It shouldn't be up to a guest to determine how much our staff makes. Exactly. I absolutely agree. That's really our responsibility as business owners, she explained. She says a lot of diners don't know folks as a no-tipping restaurant and are pleasantly surprised and sometimes a little suspicious at the end of their meals. We do have people who try to hide it underneath napkins or like leave us cash sneakily, she said. Peck says tipping is a serious policy issue and adds the future of it remains in the hands of the government. If there's action taken to try to sort through whether people should be tipping in Canada, and if so, how and under what circumstances, there's a chance that we can sort out what role tipping should have, but I fear that if there won't be that serious policy attention paid to it, we can just see these trends being further amplified with us being prompted to tip in more contexts and to be tipping more and more money. Yes, it gets ridiculous. This is out of control. But I'm 
against tipping overall, right? I mean, the business owner should charge the diner, the customer, us, and that's it. We shouldn't have to add more money. I mean, it's just too much thinking for us. When we go out for a nice meal, we want to go out and enjoy. We don't want to have to do math in our heads. What do you guys think? Do you Are you pro-tipping, anti-tipping? Leave your comments below. This is Jason W. Chan, and this has been Jason W. Chan's take. As usual, keep pursuing your dreams and passions.